so I thought that I'm going to get a little bit of the salary level so you can uh, see more exactly how energy is produced and what kind of uh, elements do we need in order to produce that energy so if you think about it now this is the eukaryotic cell this is the cell type which is uh, all over in the animal world including humans so this has a cell wall on the exterior it has cytoplasm which is the the material inside all over filling the filling and then you have the nucleus and of course you have org organelles including the mitochondrion now the mitochondria is considered the energetic engine of the cell so it's the energy producer of the cell that's why it's uh, very important for the cell so this is a mitochondrium here and it's composed of two uh, it's a it has a double cell wall now one it's on the exterior and the other one it's kind of packed and it looks like this now if you're taking a small tissue sample from there and you look at it under the um, electron microscope what you see it's just the membrane which is formed of lipids and also it has uh, proteins uh, which function as channels the channel channels that um, are permeable for different elements that go that pass through the cell uh, membrane so everything goes through the membrane actually in the mitochondrium through these channels so on this side of the membrane here you have hydrogen ions at the high concentration and they are in a low concentration inside the mitochondrium so they what's going to happen they will pass from the higher concentration to the lower concentration inside but this needs to be uh, this is done only in the presence of this ADP synthetase which is an enzyme so in that case the hydrogen ion it's pumped or channeled through um, this and then gets inside the mitochondrium when that happens and you have this adenosine uh, phosphate molecule um, which is going to be converted into adenosine triphosphate molecules which uh, functions pretty much like a battery in your mitochondrium when the cell needs more energy then it's going to use these ATPs in order to produce energy um, and they will be converted into ADPs so it's kind of a cycle see from ADP to ADP from ATP to ADP again and this is the ATP molecule so um, it's composed of adenine ribose which is a sugar and three groups of free phosphate groups now the last phosphate group here it's unstable unstable and in presence of water this is going to be uh, released and it's going to result in a spark of energy so this is pretty much how it's produced now these ions are originating from food and I'm talking about sugars and fats in all of their forms and what's going to remain from uh, the food and carbons they will uh, join with oxygen and they will be turned in CO2 which is going to be released the bloodstream and it's going to get back to uh, your lungs and through, lung, through, through your lungs it's going to get out of the body but this is the process here 
um, the idea is that oxygen when you breathe in gets through your lungs from your lungs gets in the bloodstream and gets to the mitochondrium and actually plays a very important role because it's going to speed up the process and this means that it's going to result in more ATP production now whole, this whole process can uh, function without any oxygen and from one molecule of sugar you're going to get two ATPs but at a higher rate of oxygen uh, the same molecule of sugar is going to be uh, it's going to produce 36 ADPs so this means that oxygen plays a tremendous role in the production of energy in the body um, what I wanted to tell you is that oxygen it's strongly connected to um, the presence of iron in the bloodstream because oxygen can be just transported by itself it needs iron in order to be transported now if you're looking at the at the um, <coughs> assimilation or or the absorption of iron in the body iron comes from food and it's absorbed at the small intestine so from food um, comes in a form which is not assimilable uh, in the um, through the intestine small intestine so it needs to be converted actually from ferric uh, ferric iron to ferrous iron and that's done with uh, c vitamin it's an enzyme which is called uh, ferroreductase and then it's going to be able to uh, pass through this uh, channel inside the cell of the small intestine and from there of course it's going to go to different organs in the body but also um, through the bloodstream it's going to get to uh, the energetic uh, engines of the body so <coughs> this means that actually we'll need also C vitamin and enzymes so as a conclusion if you look at the whole thing here what we'll need is sugar and or fat actually fat it's more energetic than sugar it's like almost twice more energetic than, than sugar that's why when you eat fat actually and you go and you start to uh, work physically then you won't feel as hungry as you would have uh, taken the same amount of sugar for example and it lasts for a longer period of time um, also we'll need enzymes enzymes are also made in the body but they also can be produced um, no they can originate from uh, living foods and of course we'll need oxygen more oxygen c vitamin phosphates because we know that the adenosine tri triphosphate it has phosphate it's in it in its structure and we'll need of course iron and that's pretty much it so this is uh what we need in order to boost the energy that we need now in the next video i'm going to um, tell you more exactly where we can find these elements and how we can uh, increase them in order to have more energy uh, or to get to that uh, constant flow of energy